So is cheap knockoffs, rebrands, white labels, clones, whatever you want to call it, any good? Here we have a mechanical gaming keyboard and a gaming mouse for $62 in total. Let's check them out. So this mechanical keyboard was just 42 bucks and this gaming mouse was just 20 bucks. Let's unbox them and see how they feel. Let's start with a mouse. And I should say that these are LEDs. Or I don't know if it is fully RGB, but I don't think so for this price. But we we'll just have to wait and see until we plug it into a PC. And we got a manual. Let's see what it says. Okay, so it is 125 hertz, adjustable DPI, all the way from 200 to 7200, and it has its own drivers and software. It weighs 150 grams, and works for every Windows, so nothing too exciting. And the immediate look of it is, it kind of reminds me of the uh, Logitech G502, if I'm not taking the wrong model here. So it feels like it is nylon braided cable. So it sits quite nicely in my hand and like the Logitech model has rubber here for the thumb. If I'm not totally mistaken, this is all plastic, so it can glide off, but for 20 bucks, it's fine, I guess. So let's put the mouse aside for now and let's get on with the keyboard. And a nylon braided cable as well. Or sleeve, or whatever you like to call it. So we have a manual here as well. Let's see what we can find out what's in here. And yeah, this product is not a toy. That depends on how whom you ask. And so yeah, nothing exciting there at all. And this mechanical, and we have our feet here. And the body is all aluminum, except for the feet that are plastic, but who cares about that? So now to the switches that this keyboard has. It is the Sherry MX clone, Otimu. I may pronounce it completely wrong, but it is a Chinese clone of them. And supposedly what I know about them is they are a good budget alternative. 
Many are Chinese and the quality may vary. So let's get a PC up here and plug this in and see how well it goes to game with them. So now here we are. Everything's plugged in, up and running. I couldn't get the software for the mouse because their web page is down at the moment. So I'm just gonna do a bot match in the CSGO and see how everything feels. So you have two buttons, one is for increasing the DPI and the other is for lower it. So let's increase the DPI. And whoa! There is everybody. Bonus weapon! Aha! They feel quite good, actually. So I'm not going to do any deep tests with these accessories or peripherals or whatever you want to call it. Because this is more like for the average geo type. I mean, if you are a professional esports player you know already what you want so but this could be useful as a backup well so i have to say that the keyboard and mouse feels good to use they are responsive and very nice that's a nice touch to them. And this is perfect for the beginner or for anyone who wants a backup and don't want to spend too much on it. So I can say that I am used to the old uh, office stuff. Because when I did begin, the word gaming wasn't used nearly as much in peripherals as it is nowadays, where everything is gaming. Like, gaming power supply. I mean, I was in competitions and uh, was a competitive gamer and I used a standard OEM mouse. Wasn't anything special at all. So if it is one thing that I have to say about this, that is immediately standing out, is that you have a basically a DPI plus and minus buttons, two separate, so you don't have to go all the way up and then go back and continue like that. So here you can up, ah, too much, lower it, perfect. I have not seen that on many mouses. So that is a nice addition. And I mean, first impression is they're solid. So we'll keep using them for a while and see how well they hold up. So now it is one day after I did the testing of these peripherals and uh, now their website is back up and I could get the driver and the software for the mouse. So let's have a look at it. So in the software you have your base settings and you can change the layout of all the buttons. Now let's say we take the backward button you can change it to left, mid, right, backward, forward, DPI loop, extend, lead loop, function, fire, double click, show desktop, open browser, I believe it is, media player, mail, volume up and down, previous, next, mute, play, pause, calculator. And you have pre-programmed the macros for PUBG in here. 
and a lot of other shortcuts like here PUBG different type of weapons and you convert them to a macro for that only PUBG but you should be able to set your own and you see here macros keys LEDs you can do configure it all for yourself and over advanced settings we can set our pointer precision now it's a 5 out of 10 and I feel like that's the way I like it and the wheel speed fire speed and our DPI settings so you can see the different colors or which you want to enable or disable so you can drag this so I believe you can go in and uh, set this one 800 open it up like that set it 1400 let's go to the 1600 change that to 2000 set this one to 4000 So you can actually we can change individual states of the mouse, which is pretty neat. I have not seen this before in mouse softwares, but I don't use a lot of them as well. So let's just reset all this. And now we have LED settings. So what are my first impressions to this? It's, they feel pretty solid. And the mouse has this neat feature where you can increase and decrease the GPI by buttons up and down. And uh, not like other mouses where you have to press one button, go too far. Oh, you have to roll it over again and keep going and going and going until you find the right setting. And then you might press it one time too much and you have to do the same procedure again and again and again. Which for me is a pain. And you can also go into software and change the values of each DPI setting individually. Which is pretty neat. I have not seen that in budget mouses ever, I think. And it feels good in hand. The only thing that I would have wished for is that... But the thumb that you had a rubber grip, but can you really complain? It has a lot more other features to it. Customizable in software and so on. Unfortunately, you can't customize the weight of it. That's a bummer, but for 20 bucks, it's awesome. And the RGB is nice on it as well. It's not too aggressive in some settings. So, some RGB settings on this could be harmful to those who can't stand the uh, extreme flashing light. And now to the keyboard. It feels durable with a aluminum body. And uh, just typing, it feels nice. The only thing that I wished it had was a bigger enter button here. But that is my personal preference. Other than that, the lighting on it are nice and subtle. It only has two settings, one which illuminates all the keys and one that's kind of going back to 
the old Nokia sneaky game or you can call it whatever you like. That was my first thought when I saw it. So we have to see how long they last and what I can tell right away is that it feels durable. It has some nice quality to it and it is only 42 bucks. So you get a lot for it. I mean, it's pretty standard layout and it has a numpad and I love numpads, but it is also a personal preference, of course. So this also get a solid recommendation. And that's it for this time. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please press like if you did and don't forget to leave a comment down below. And in a comment down below will be a link if you want to support the channel even further than watching the videos. You can send a donation that goes straight to the channel so I can do some more projects and other fun stuff. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you all next time.